on my hair just for this video. I guess you could say that I substituted my hair for some other haircut. I hope you're having a great day. We are looking at the five, seven set. Notice how I'm not doing the ready. The ready's not too important for us today. I'm just jumping to the set. Hope that's okay with you. Hope you're doing well. We are being asked to solve the system of equations. Remember this deals with if we have two or more equations, we are either seeing in five, seven or about to see in five, seven, how we can use substitution to solve these systems. Previously, we tried graphing these, which worked pretty well, um, but now we're seeing what would happen if we were to solve these using substitution. We'll even check our solution in both equations. Sound good, capiche? Let's knock out nine. Nine is helping us out by saying that we're substituting x plus one in place of y in the second equation, which makes sense because they're already saying, hey, y equals something. So if we were to take a closer look at equation two, wherever we see y, we can now put in place parentheses x plus one. So notice this was originally where y was, but up here, this is saying, oh, you could write that as x plus one. That's fair game. They're equal to each other. You can do that. So this is actually something we can solve. So I see parentheses, I'm gonna distribute. I'm gonna keep X at the front, plus two X now, plus two, this equals eight. We can combine some like terms here with X and two X, getting three X plus two. Take a moment, solve this using SADMEP. A little bit of a throwback to solve this. Use subtraction or addition at first to try and isolate X then use division or multiplication to try and isolate X. Take a moment, pause the video, try it. You should have said that eventually X equals two by subtracting two at first, dividing by three eventually. Okay, so now we can solve, well, now let's maybe take note of what we've done. So we know that in this problem, our X coordinate's gonna be two. How do you think we could go about getting the Y coordinate? What do you think? Well, we know that in this first equation, this is claiming y equals x plus one. So we know that y would be equal to two plus one, because remember, x is two. So we could eventually take this further and say y equals three. Boom shakalaka. Um, we could go back and we could plug into the second equation to make sure that this makes sense. Uh, this was asked of us to check our work. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking equation two, just to make sure that this works. Uh, when you're really confident, you don't have to check your work, but you should for the first few, just to make sure that you're doing this right. So originally it was X, but now we can put two. You can then add on two times Y, but Y is now three. And this should equal eight. We have two, two times three is six, two plus six equals eight, eight equals eight. This is a true statement. So this is definitely our solution here, two comma three. Capiche, sound good? Take a moment, try 10, try problem 10. Pause the video, try 10, let me know what answer you get. We'll touch base shortly. You should have gotten this far. You should have plugged in three plus Y in place of X for the first equation. You should have distributed. You should have eventually solved for Y. So I'll do my best to write in what the steps were here. Here you were solving for Y. Um, eventually you're subtracting six, dividing by three, which is okay. You're eventually saying that Y equals one third, capiche? Uh, eventually you can hop over here to step four and you're getting X, you know that X equals three plus Y, but you can now write Y as one third. So we can now say that X equals three and one third. A mixed fraction, not super pretty, but nothing we can't handle. Hope that sounds good. I'll see you in the go. Just gonna gloss over 16 through 19. Um, 
you're being asked to solve the inequalities. You have an like two sides of the inequality to focus on. So think of isolating X terms to one side. That's gonna be the main thing to help you out. And then constants to the other. So um, I know in 16, I have 4X plus 10, and this is less than 2X plus 14. I could move my X terms to the left because four has a little bit more going on with it. I can move my constants to the right. I can then simplify what's left. 4X minus 2X is 2X. These tens canceled. This is all less than 14 minus 10, which is just four. I can divide both sides by two. This is gonna claim that X is less than two. If we wanted to map this out, we could get an open circle on two. So here, and we want values that are less than that. So we just draw an arrow to the left. Capiche, sound good? Um, for 20, you're solving the inequality and using this set notation, it's fine. Um, same kind of thing, you're getting your X terms to one side and then moving your constants to the other. We'll start with 21. I see that I have some X terms here, some X terms here. My constants are already pretty much on its own. So just to make things easier, I'll deduct X here and eight X from here. We're now left with negative three X is greater than 27. I can divide both sides by negative three. Does that seem like I have to change something? What do you think? You gotta change the sign. So notice we've changed the sign. 27 divided by negative three is just negative nine. As far as this set builder notation, you can pretty much mimic what was written up here you have X as an element, all real numbers, such that X is less than negative nine. So when they say the set builder notation, this is what they're saying. But if you got this far, I'd say that's about a three star answer. But if you can write all this, oh, my own, that's a five star one. Hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, holler, bring them to class, let me know. Thanks for watching.